G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Sunday sort of afternoon here in Australia, market up ever so slightly, hardly really moved, uh, you know, half a percent it's moved up, still under that $2.7 trillion mark. BTC dominance dropped ever so slightly, well actually it's just sitting around about the same, so under 42% though, so it has been coming down, not a lot of volume, the weekend kind of to be expected. Bitcoin sitting under $59,000 and gas prices down lower than we've sort of seen them in a while as well. I think a lot of people are still a little bit kind of nervous with where the market's going at the moment. You know, we haven't been able to break back above $60,000, so we could still be in a bit of a downwards trend. We'll have to wait and see exactly what happens. But also a lot of people are optimistic that, you know, the bottom uh, is in and it's on and upwards from here. All right, as we can see, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Some things have done well, others haven't, you know. Again, sideways uh, tra trending market, so you'll see some nice gains and, you know, some, you know, there'll be some equal sort of losses, I guess. So what's done well, though, in the last 24 hours in the top 100? What's our best performer? Whew, Gala, doing extremely well, up another 64%. This had a massive pump the other day, so again, it's a... Metaverse kind of play, NFTs, gaming, all that kind of stuff, doing extremely well. Uh, E-Gold, Elrond, uh, having a nice move there. Render Token, never even heard of it, but there you go. Harmony One, Immutable X, Arweave. We've got some nice moves considering the market hasn't done too much. Even Theta and Luna, Thorchain, there we go. Nothing sort of too crazy. Only, you know, four double-digit gainers with one being, you know, a, a real... Uh, remarkable 24-hour <laughs> gain. Uh, Elrond is just a nice one. Again, 15% and above in 24 hours is a nice gain. And anything under that is just, you know, in my books anyway, just a gain. <laughs> Nothing sort of too amazing. What about the losses though? We go to the flip side. What hasn't performed so well? All right, so Wax Token are uh, starting to come down after pumping so hard. You know, it had a really good run there and the sandbox has also had a little bit of a retracement. I don't think as bad as Wax though. Mina Protocol, you know, almost, Wax almost at a 10% discount, uh, but not quite there. And then everything else, you know, we're getting into mid to low single digit sort of losses. So yeah, nothing kind of too bad there whatsoever. Again, considering, you know, a lot of these tokens that are down today are ones that were literally just pumping the other day. Although Aave uh, continues to come down, uh, it has gone to a new low against Ethereum, but we've got to remember Aave was once ETHLAND, so it's hard to get the long-term chart for that. But yeah, I still like Aave. I think it's, you know, for me, it's the number one kind of DeFi protocol. Uh, and again, with its you know, Aave Pro coming out. I think once the big institutions start to get on board and start to use all that kind of stuff, I think you'll see Aave do extremely well. And again, they do have a financial license over in Europe and they are looking to get a financial license in the uh, in Asia, I think Singapore is where they were looking at. And then look, it'll just be a matter of time until they are pretty much adopted worldwide in my personal opinion not financial advice never financial advice because i am not a financial advisor but yeah again sideways trending market we're still really waiting to see what will happen we've still got sunday to come stateside time so that'll be uh australian time tonight and then we're waiting to see what happens monday morning is it you know back to the upside and everything starts to fire off again or are we still going to see some more downwards pressure? Let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So again, what we can see is we've had the bounce and now we've already had a little bit of a sell-off as well. So it didn't quite get up to sort of the 60-ish thousand dollar level. We got a rejection from there. So what I'm waiting to see is if this maybe doesn't start to come down again. And like I said, maybe we got to come down and sort of test, you know, what's this bottom range there? About sort of $56,000. But again, maybe even we've got to come somewhere down around about here, fifty-four dollars to $53,000. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I'm never here trying to spread FUD. I'm just trying to tell you what I have in the back of my mind. Again, I've got my buy orders in for if things continue to go down because I like buying the dip. Uh, I'm not as keen to be buying into things going into new all-time highs unless it's a bit of a breakout trade, which again, if Bitcoin gets back up to around about sort of $69,000, 
you could consider that a breakout trade, maybe not a bad place to get back into it because it's likely going to pump up fairly higher. But look, this is where we were before. That was our old all-time high. And if you had it done here, a breakout trade, you would have had to suffer a loss. And then again, even there, we haven't really had a lot of upwards movement. So are we going to see you know, possibly months of sideways action or... Is it going to play out like everyone is expecting it? You know, moon, vember and December and, you know, a blow off top in maybe early January. Or again, is it pushing out to March when a lot of other people think it might? Or is it pushing out to even November, like Data Dash has said? I'm leaning towards somewhere between March and November. Let's say sort of June, July is roughly where I see us having a, a blow off top. You know, the crazy retail FOMO that will really be what pushes it to these crazy highs that's not going to come until bitcoins at a hundred thousand some people are looking at it now but they when they do come and have a look at it they'll see the volatility and be oh god you know all they're going to see is this so you're telling me it was at sixty four thousand dollars and it dropped all the way down to uh below thirty thousand dollars i don't want to touch that even though it's back up here it hasn't gone high enough for me I'm going to wait until it's at least seventy, eighty thousand dollars, and I'm assured that it's on the way up. And that's just the way a lot of people think, and that's what they're going to be looking at. So unfortunately, they aren't going to come in until it's way up here, because then they're going to go, all right, yeah, this thing really is mooning. And you know, if they're lucky, they get in an eighty-eight thousand, and you know, they don't get wrecked before they get out. But unfortunately, they probably will. That is just you know how people who don't understand markets usually work. They don't want to buy when it's going down. They want to buy when it's at crazy prices and they think it's only going to get crazier from there. And look, that's unfortunate. Anyone who's new to trading, investing and things like that, we've all done it. I've done it and I did it a number of times uh, early on. And as I've said before, even XRP, I was lucky enough to buy it at 21 cents and I got a really good bag. I saw it go up to $1.80. And then it dumped with all that SEC FUD and I sold it, basically all of it, except for a very small amount, at 19 cents. And guess what the bottom was? 19 cents. I literally picked it almost perfect and then it went back up from there. And I have bought most of it back and I've been able to buy it at you know, cheaper prices than $1.80 and things like that. But that you know was a lesson learned for me. I just, I reminded myself that Number one, I'm never putting anything, I'm never putting that much into any one thing that if it fails, that it's really going to ruin me. Uh, and number two, that, you know, markets, period, all of them, they're exactly the same. They, tr they work on human psychology. Whenever you're thinking, uh, you know, this is the absolute uh, worst it could get, that's probably the best time to buy and that's when people just won't buy and then again when people are thinking oh it's gonna go super crazy from here that's probably when you should have already taken profits because it's about to dump uh, and again lesson learned you know if i had have just held that xrp and even bought more at 19 cents i'd be in such a good profit right now because i mean xrp is sitting at like about a dollar so again i would have five x my money but you know You've got to learn lessons and I'm far from perfect. And again, this channel is all about, you know, the things that I do, what's worked for me, what hasn't worked for me. And hopefully, you know, you can get some ideas of what might work for you and what might not work for you. But never financial advice, I must say that again. All right, this absolutely blew my mind. I thought this was a really interesting story. Zcash prices jumped 29% and that's not anything too crazy. Altcoins are doing that. But they, their devs have come out and said that they are moving to proof of stake. They are a proof of work coin. And not only that, but they are also looking to release their own wallet in 2022 before they move uh, to proof of stake, uh, environmentally friendly and all the rest of it is their reason for doing it. So, you know, is there hope that maybe Bitcoin will eventually go to that? Not so sure but definitely a possibility because Zcash is doing it. And not only are they going to proof of stake, but they are looking to go into operable. So the last part of ECC's roadmap, and that is Zcash, focuses on interoperability. As the company completes the transition to a proof of stake model, new opportunities for cross-chain interoperability will arise, like using interoperability network 
cosmos so the atom token so there you go interoperability it really will be the thing and again i think a lot of coins will move away from proof of work and go towards proof of stake it's just a much friendlier sort of space and again you know with all the environmental things going on and it just makes me wonder you know and i'd love to know your thoughts down below do you think Bitcoin would ever move to a proof of stake or will they simply just stay at a uh, proof of work? Interesting thought of them moving to proof of stake because, I mean, then basically anyone who owns Bitcoin, you know, will be getting rewards, which will be, well, you would think, then again, they might uh, set it that you have to have X, you know, a minimum of amount of like, you know, a thousand or 10,000 to earn any of the <laughs> proof of stake rewards. But, you know, hopefully they wouldn't make it like that hopefully they would make it that everyone would be able to get rewards uh and it would just be again you know based on sort of how much you have but divvy it out for basically everybody that would really make bitcoin the absolute ultimate and completely environmentally not completely because it still has to use power uh to to run on computers but that would be like the normal sort of amount of energy that any normal computer would use so yeah, just something to keep in mind that, you know, possibly uh, Bitcoin could move because, it, you know, if Zcash can do it and it'll take them three years, then Bitcoin could absolutely do it. And with all the environmental things going on, it would definitely be something for them to, to consider. But whether they would is a different question, but they definitely could considering Zcash is about to do it. All right. Just something to keep in mind about DeFi. I mean, DeFi has been very, very quiet and all the regulatory fight and everything that's sort of going on, I believe, has uh, got a lot to do with it. But overall losses from DeFi exploits have exceeded $12 billion in 2021, and that's up seven times more than last year in 2020. So, you know, DeFi was all the craze and still sort of is, you know, there's people getting into DeFi and Akala's a DeFi network for polka dot and things like that and they got the first parachain so DeFi is essential and it really will be kind of part of the core of cryptocurrencies because you know the word currency although a lot of them aren't really currencies there's uh you know they're, they're tokens utility tokens and things like that a lot of them only a few are true currencies but whew, 12 billion that is a lot. That is a lot of money to be lost. So you must be very, very careful with, you know, all of these chains. But look, just because one has an exploit doesn't mean it's done for. I mean, Rune Thorchain, I think they had two and they're still around and people are still really bullish on them and they're still going, so that's okay. And yeah, but unfortunately, a lot of them have been hacked really, really bad and people have just lost their money altogether. But also not just from hacks and things like that also from just rug pulls so you got to be very careful in the DeFi space and that is why i don't really put money into too many really new projects i i understand that i won't get the crazy gains i like to get into things that have at least got a little bit of history and you know have been audited and things like that uh, and i'd rather put my money there because the gains are still good enough like <laughs> you know no one's upset with a 10x gain uh, but don't get me wrong, I would love to get the 100x gains. And look, I have had two 100x gains, uh, Polygon and Cardano, and they had been out for a while before I got into them. So they they were kind of proven, and that just goes to show that you don't have to go for the newest crazy thing to get those kinds of gains. You can get into projects that just haven't pumped yet but have still been around for a while, have good teams, good fundamentals, and things like that. Now, the chances of, you know, finding 100 X's from here, you know, I'm not so sure. But again, I didn't think Solana could do it. I didn't think Avalanche could do it. You know, Phantom, I don't know if they've actually done 100 X's. I'm pretty sure Solana has. But they've all had some pretty crazy X's. And I mean, look at Shiba Inu. That did, you know, something absolutely ridiculous. And even that's slowly started to come back a little bit. But it still could be on the way down. Just keep that in mind. Now, last but not least last but not least sorry 10 congress members have asked nancy pelosi to help revise crypto provisions in the new infrastructure bill over in the states so it just goes to show there are lots of other senators you know at least 10 and these are only the ones that have spoken up at the moment that understand what crypto is where it's going and that how many of their new voters are actually going to be crypto friendly like a majority of voters now over in the states are millennials 
they're making up some of the biggest sort of percentages, millennials. And, you know, imagine trying to ban crypto when they are the people that will vote you in next. It would just be you know, an absolute bloodbath. You know, the boomers are on their way out, Gen Ys, Gen Zs, Gen Xs and all that. You know, we're all sort of getting older and even a lot of us are now starting to see the benefits of crypto. So it would be, you know, a brave parliamentarian to, and don't get me wrong there are some but they are they're old school they're the really old school ones and if they want to stay in parliament they need to understand where this is going and it just goes to show that some are so 10 members of the u.s house of representatives have called on house speaker nancy pelosi to address the problem with the crypto provisions in the infrastructure law they explain that the current definition of a broker in the law would increase uncertainty in the cryptocurrency industry, pick winners and losers, all while eroding our country's competitive edge against other countries in the digital asset market space. And this is the most important part here. They understand, and all countries do now, they really do. Most governments are now trying to get on the front foot. Front foot. Not all, but most are. They're trying to make sure that they regulate it properly. And the biggest issue is, Governments just want their fair share. That's what it comes down to. They don't really care what system gets used and, you know, you know things like that. As long as they're getting their, their amount, you know, to pay the taxes and all the rest of it, they couldn't care less whether it's the dollar, Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know what I mean? It really wouldn't matter to them. They want the most popular one. They just want to make sure it's safe. Not, to, you know... <laughs> safe for the user but that's not really the biggest thing they want to make sure they get their cut and that they will always get their cut they can understand uh, and there's something that can show them that they're getting their cut that's really all that they care about there isn't a person on the world who wouldn't jump onto a better system as long as they understood it and could get their cut and that's all that it is at the moment governments are not sure you know of this space full stop and don't understand that because it's on a blockchain it's easy to see how it's all moving around and easier to get your cut once they understand that they are going to mass migrate over to cryptocurrencies it's just getting them educated that's the hard part at the moment but you can see and this is in the us you know we're still waiting on regulation here in australia but it does look like uh, you know our government is quite pro crypto they're not anti-crypto and they're moving to get on the front foot and a lot of exciting things are happening here in Australia but there's many other countries it's just some countries are a little bit slower and it's because of the old guard you know traditional finance people they've got a you know the walled garden that everyone talks about they've got a system set up that makes them you know so much money and, and they are inside that system and they don't want that system to change because now they've got to try and get into a new system and they're not going to be as early as what other people were. They're not going to be, you know, the real early ones. But the funny thing is, they still would be really early because the majority of the world's not in crypto. They just don't understand that yet. If they get over and migrate quickly, they will still be, you know, one of the true early adopters. The biggest portion of the world is not anywhere near into crypto yet. You know, crypto makes up such a small portion and again, it's simply educating leaders, you know, parliamentarians and things like that of how this all really works and that the system is there. They'll be able to get their taxes. It'll be right there. You know, it's just about how you find in the code to make sure that it gets paid and things like that. That's, you know, a, a different story. And it's not so much in the code, but, you know, how they go about collecting it. But once they understand that it's actually going to be easier to track everything, they're going to be straight onto it. They'll be all over it. And again, that is the only thing that, you know, big business and governments and that care about is getting their fair share. Big business, they just want to own the majority of it. Hence why hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, billions of dollars, trillions of dollars, not so much trillions yet, but it is coming, is being poured into the crypto space because they can see where it's going. But they can't just simply jump out of the old system that still makes them a whole lot of money. So they will slowly migrate across until they see that the old system is just, it's, you know, basically dead and dying and they'll let everyone else stay on that old system for as long as they can and they will be across to this new system and again, have a big footing in it and then they'll bring everyone across again when they can, you know, really reap all the profits. Hence why if you are in crypto now and you've done your research and got in on some good projects, 
you are already miles ahead. Governments haven't got here yet. You know, big business, some big businesses here, but not a majority of big business. A majority of big business is still over on the other side in traditional finance. You are early. Is it going to be volatile? Absolutely. It's going to be super volatile, both to the upside and the downside. Again, do your research, particularly with Bitcoin. It doesn't matter what price you've bought Bitcoin at. If you've held for four years or longer, you are well and truly in profit. And I mean well and truly in profit. That's how it's worked so far. Past doesn't isn't always indicative of what will happen uh, in the future, but it's the best thing we have to do to give us an idea of where things are going. And you just look at the crypto space. It is exploding. You've now got, again, parliamentarians, you know, scrambling to make sure that they get this set up properly because they don't want to erode a country's competitive edge against others. And they, you know, they want to be on the forefront of innovation and things like that. That really is where they want to be. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Bit of a bounce back, but, you know, maybe the dip's not completely over yet. And I'll see you next time.